Hello, Pendelco families. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Pendelco Cyber Option, as well as components of our online instruction for this fall. This will be an overview for all levels K-12. Now, a few key points before we begin, just for clarity's sake. Until at least October 9th, Pendelco will be all virtual. All students will be receiving virtual instruction. What we're gonna highlight tonight and in this presentation will be the Cyber Option once hybrid or in-person instruction resumes. Pendelco Cyber will be an option for those students and parents who would like to remain in virtual when the school board makes the determination to bring students back to school. There's nothing parents need to do until a change in status occurs, and we're gonna send reminders and information at that time. So as of right now, all Pendelco students will be engaged in virtual instruction. The one thing I really want to make uh, just clear to everybody is how we prepared for our cyber and virtual instruction. There was careful consideration and reflection from the spring about how we could make this the best it can possibly be. And we really wanted to be sure that every uh, stakeholder in this had a voice and we took it into consideration. So we spent time with focus groups at all levels for teachers. So every single department, every single grade level, uh, Mr. Kaminka and myself, sat with them as well as some of our curriculum people um, and really listened to what they thought worked well, what could be better, as well as what tools they would need if we ever had to revisit this uh, virtual learning. We also dove into survey results. So what did parents have to say? What did students have to say? General feedback, what could be done better? Um, administrators also uh, were able to give their input on what they thought could improve instruction. Uh, if you had a conversation with a principal about what you thought could be better or different, um, they've certainly shared those as well. So the bottom line is we have certainly been listening and we really try to take all of the all the input into consideration uh, to produce what I think will be a, a much smoother, much more robust and much more meaningful instruction um, for this fall, as well as within our cyber program. As a result, our cyber program now includes a pivot to more live synchronous instruction. There's more teacher to student interaction as well as collaboration from student to student. So we're really trying to bring in those 21st century goals and be sure that those students have access to their teacher uh, in a meaningful way on a daily basis. We also understand that this is a difficult time for students. So we have built in social emotional learning lessons uh, and collaboration opportunities to keep students connected with their peers and on the right track emotionally as well as academically. With regard to Schoology, we've really tried to simplify this process for parents, students, and teachers. So we have a universal folder system in place that will allow students and teachers to always be able to find the appropriate assignments no matter what course they're in. And we also have a simplified Schoology, Schoology access uh, through Chromebooks, which I'll speak more deeply about. So with regard to technology, there were specific investments uh, to support our students as well as our instructional goals. So we now have individual Chromebooks at all levels. So in the past, we were only one-to-one, -one, meaning one device per one student at the high school level. That's changed. So whether your student is in kindergarten or 12th grade, they will have their own individual Chromebook. We also invested heavily in software to support engagement, collaboration, and 21st century skills and assessment. So parents are probably familiar with, obviously, engagement and what collaboration means, but 21st century skills means sort of Moving a little, moving away from those multiple choice tests and fill in the blank to students as creators of content, students using critical thinking skills, creativity, communication, uh, those types of items to produce a product very much like you would in the real world. So really a shift towards that. You'll still see multiple choice, you'll still see those items, but we are pivoting towards those 21st century skills. Really, really important point here is we're gonna have simplified Schoology login for those who previously did not have Chromebooks. So in the past, students might've tried to use uh, the computer at home, which is different from what they saw in school, and they perhaps had some trouble logging in or, or finding different items. Well, we've solved that problem. Because every student now has a Chromebook, once they're logged into that Chromebook, they simply click a bookmark that will be present in the upper left, and students will then be taken automatically to Schoology. To show you what I mean, um, this is exactly the process any student would take. Once students are signed into a Chromebook with their PDSD students' accounts, to log into Schoology couldn't be easier, whether you're in kindergarten or 12th grade. You will go to the PDSD students' bookmarks, 
choose Schoology. And from this screen, you'll simply click on your PDSD student's account. After selecting your PDSD student's account, it will automatically take you into Schoology so you can access your courses and content. So uh, really, the only thing a student needs to be able to do is log into that Chromebook and use that Google password. This video will also be shared with parents so that they can assist students if they have trouble logging in. Some of the technology investments that we've purchased include Nearpod, New ZLA, the Chromebooks, Edpuzzle, Screencastify, Jamboard, Discovery Ed, as well as other apps and extensions. Uh, these are just highlighting a few. And these were not tools that were randomly chosen. Uh, we specifically chose these programs because they fill specific needs. So those, again, those goals of collaboration, added engagement, and 21st century assessment. So why does this matter? Because this is going to provide an improved learning experience for students, and it's going to give teachers more tools in their toolbox, the tools that they need to address uh, specific things that perhaps weren't as present in the spring. And here's a good example. So if you're not familiar with Nearpod, what you can do is take a slide deck and build in opportunities for student to, students to engage with it. Um, so rather than students simply hearing a, a, a lecture and seeing a PowerPoint or a Google Slides presentation, they're going to participate with it. And as we know, when you participate with something, it becomes more memorable. So some of the features that this program includes uh, are collaboration options, content check-ins, short questions, polls. And the way these polls can be used can be very effective. So in addition to you know, teachers seeing the data for specific questions, the last question on any Nearpod can be, how well do you think you understood the lesson? So in addition to seeing the questions that uh, students got right or wrong, parents have a good understanding of how well students feel that they absorbed that lesson as well. So that data is always available to teachers after each session. And that's going to be used to target future instruction and really be, spe be specific in a way that we couldn't before um, whether that was in person or um, virtually. So this is a, an incredible tool that I think will really uh, help move us along. All the integrations that we chose are smart and simple. So we really set a goal to have no new passwords and that these programs would integrate with either Schoology or Google. So we didn't want to have to create another location that parents or students would have to venture to. So with all these new um, with all these new tools, with all these new programs, how are we going to onboard students and parents to be sure we can use them effectively? Well, for students, the first week activities in any course are going to focus on showing students how to log in and access those materials. We want teachers to start with some fun and engaging um, activities so that they can get to know the students. We can focus on that collaboration. Students can get to know one, and what, one another. And most importantly, students can get to know the technology. So again, that first week is going to be about teachers onboarding students and getting to know them. For parents, we have back to school night where each teacher can review the layout of their Schoology course, their content to be sure that all parents can access. Um, and if you ever run into any trouble with any of your access, uh, please always email helpdesk at pdsd.org and we'll be sure to help you. Look out uh, coming shortly an email showing parents how to find their Schoology login if they have forgotten it how to reset their password if they need to, how to navigate uh, the software, and anything else. So all those items should be very, very helpful ahead of the start of school. In the first week, necessary supplies will be given out, Chromebooks as well as required books and other materials. There'll be more information as uh, those begin to get scheduled. So for the first day, it's always an important time and uh, that is no different this year, uh, but it will look a bit different. So just to be sure everybody feels confident about that first day, teachers will email the link to the first Zoom or Google Meet at the elementary level, and they'll, they can send it to parents and students. Uh, at the secondary level, all the student needs to do is log into Schoology, and that Zoom or Google link will appear at the top, as you can see in this picture. So all the student needs to be able to do is get into Schoology, and I encourage everybody to try to do that ahead of the start of school. Uh, this way, if you do run into an issue, you can certainly let us know and we can help you get through that and fix it. The one thing that I'm very uh, encouraged about is our universal folder system. So what we're going to have, no matter what course you're in, is that the materials that are due that week will be labeled in a weekly folder. So an example on the left 
shows the what a secondary folder might look like. And on the right, we have perhaps what an elementary folder system setup could look like. We are giving uh, teachers the professional courtesy of within these weekly folders, choosing how they want to align their content. So they might have a slightly different setup within the folder, um, but that could be due to the course content or what makes sense for their students. Uh, but any parent will be able to look at a folder and know which, which period of time uh, it, is, it is for. And these will also sit at the top of the course. So the most recent items will be at the top of the course. So again, if you have a student in second grade or if you have a student in 10th grade, that folder system will be very obvious and easy to navigate. We've been really trying to be as prepared as possible despite the different options presented to us um, and what we've had to come up with. So no matter what, um, we really took the time to be super prepared. So we had groups of teachers come in at each level and they participated in professional development specific to technology, to using technology and curriculum in an online environment. They're going to help train other teachers in addition to the professional development that we will be providing as a district. And our training will be ongoing at each level to adjust to school needs. In addition to our weekly, uh, I'm sorry, in addition to our monthly tech trainings, we will also um, have office hours for teachers to get help on specific items. And um, as needed, we can have additional professional development. School G login navigation will also be sent out to parents to verify access to accounts or get, get assistance ahead of the start of school. These are going to be short and specific video directions so that parent can, parents can check out their accounts, make sure they can log in, they can access uh, content and be confident that prior to the start of school, they have a better understanding of how they could log into School G and access what they need. School G courses have also been made available to teachers so they can already get their classrooms and content set up. So this is gonna result in an increased focus on teaching and your children uh, rather than creating content during that time. At all schools, uh, there will be live instruction of large and small groups. So no matter what school you're at, um, we are always trying to incorporate the components of the in-school experience as much as possible. So the typical things that we know to be effective in a regular classroom, we're trying to bring these into uh, the virtual environment as well. So teachers will you know, provide a lesson overview, objectives and expectations, direct instruction, mini lessons, guided practice. Uh, we're gonna engage students in critical thinking, learning of content, skills. There'll be collaborative assignments, some independent practice. Um, and these are all designed to engage students and promote those 21st century skills. We're gonna measure learning through a variety of formal and project-based assessments. So it's not just gonna be one thing that will determine the outcome of that student's grade. So what will a typical lesson look like? Well, students will be Zooming in or using Google Meet to, to uh, video conference with their teacher. And the teacher's gonna begin by presenting that direct instruction that you see in this top blue area. So they're gonna model, talk about, or uh, address that subject matter. And I wanna really emphasize that students will not be on Zoom all day. They're going to come in for that direct instruction piece that you see here. When the direct instruction is done, they'll move to this yellow. So depending on the course, some students might hang on for some small group instruction while the others leave and do some asynchronous learning. Once that small group is done, then all students will ultimately leave the lesson and work on some asynchronous or independent work. So again, I just really want to emphasize that students will not be on Zoom all day. We know that wouldn't be appropriate for especially our younger students. So we really tried to provide um, what they need synchronously and then the freedom to work on those other assignments independently. We also uh, take into account, we, we are obviously supporting all students in these endeavors. So if you have a student who receives special education services, whether it be through an IEP or a 504, um, those items will stay ongoing and those meetings will, will uh, take place as they normally would. We have built those into the schedule. They will be done virtually, um, but all those same services will occur. We also have office hours. So even if your child doesn't receive any special services, but would like some additional um, support from their teacher, office hours have been built into all of the schedules.
Next, we're going to dive into the specifics for cyber at each level. So at Sun Valley and Northley students, and again, this is when uh, we would go back to hybrid instruction and you have opted for our Pendelco cyber experience. So Sun Valley and Northley students will attend courses virtually via Zoom with their in-class peers. They're going to be taught by the classroom teacher, and these are the same courses that the in-person peers experience. Your student would just attend virtually. So there'll be students who are attending in brick and mortar, and your child would be zooming into that same exact course, receiving the same exact instruction by the same teacher. Now, the benefit of this approach is there's a continuity of curriculum and learning. So it's you know not some outside item, it's the exact same material. They're gonna be able to maintain their school and peer interactions as much as possible in a virtual setting. So they might be uh, in a small group or a small breakout group with students who are physically in the classroom, also zooming in on a computer. So they'll be able to have that interact in with, interaction with, those, with their peers um, that may also still be in the brick and mortar environment. Another benefit is the daily routine and uh, the scheduled logins. So they're gonna be following that same bell schedule. So we won't have students sleeping until 11 o'clock and staying up till two in the morning. They are gonna have to be on point and, and be on track uh, and log in at those appropriate times. This also provides an easy transition back to in-person learning post COVID or after a marking period uh, where if they wanted to go back to brick and mortar, they wouldn't even have to change their courses, especially at the secondary level. They'll just slide right back in and attend. There will be no change to their schedule. So if we take a look at the middle school schedule here, you will see uh, the different periods and students are going to just attend according to their bell schedule. So for period one, the student would log into Schoology, uh, click on the link for their Zoom within their science course, and then they would be in that course. So that will happen on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesday is a day where there will be some synchronous and mostly asynchronous learning, where students will work on activities, catch up on some of those projects, but also have the ability to get support from their teachers or guidance counselors. Um, at the high school, it's gonna follow a similar approach to what uh, I mentioned for Northley. Uh, students are gonna follow that same bell schedule and log in at the appropriate time. Zoom in, attendance will be taken. So we really need to be sure that students are joining those Zooms at the appropriate time. and video conferencing with their class. Sun Valley has eliminated the rotating block for 2021, but they are maintaining the eight day cycle. You will experience uh, the similar Wednesday where it will be asynchronous and synchronous learning, mostly asynchronous with some synchronous learning. At the elementary school, it will be a bit different. When school reopens for hybrid instruction uh, or in-person learning, we will have a dedicated Pendelco cyber teacher at each grade level. There'll be daily opportunities for synchronous, live, virtual instruction, taking into account what is developmentally appropriate. So especially at the elementary level, we know we can't have students on the computer for hours and hours at a time. Students will be required to attend uh, following a daily schedule with specific login times. We have focused on ELA and math as core content to be sure that your child is getting synchronous instruction on those um, topics. Independent work will still be part of this program, and we will be using the Schoology platform to house all of our links rather than Google Docs. So if we take a look at this kindergarten schedule, again, these are samples, um, we can see that there's a class meeting each day. We can see uh, ELA and then small groups. So your child will receive whole group and small group instruction. Similarly, as we uh, move down, we also have small group math instruction as well. So the orange is the AM and the yellow is the P. Similarly, for grades one through five, we can see that we have a synchronous class meeting at the beginning of each day, as well as those, those same opportunities for small group instruction. Office hours are also built in from 245 to 325 in the sample schedule um, so that students have the ability to meet with their teacher to get that support that they need. There will also be that Wednesday synchronous and asynchronous learning, that catch-up day 
um, sort of that we, we were all familiar with last spring. So do I need to register my child in a cyber charter or Pendelco cyber? So no, at this time, all students are set for virtual learning by our own Pendelco teachers. Just some key facts about cyber charters. Cyber charters on average only provide just over half hour of live instruction for elementary students. And at the secondary level, much of the work is learn on your own with just a teacher check-in. As part of that, uh, parents are also expected to be learning coaches. And if a student is taking a full course load, that could mean up to five hours of support. Within Pendoka Cyber, we provide substantially more access to a live teacher, as well as those office hour sessions. And our teachers want to teach. They have a personal investment in your students. They're part of our district. Uh, we know that COVID will not last forever and they desperately want to teach your children and they desperately want to see them succeed. So can I withdraw my child from another cyber charter? And the answer is yes. So if you already enrolled them, they enrolled them in a cyber charter and you want to come uh, to Pendelco here, uh, it ha yes, it happens all the time. So all you have to do is contact Marty Owens at our registration office and she'll be more than happy to assist you um, to get us to get you re-enrolled back in Pendelco. So in summary, our Pendelco Cyber program is open to all Pendelco students for virtual learning. Students may remain in cyber 100% uh, for at-home learning if the district does decide to go back to the hybrid option. So why Pendelco Cyber? Uh, most importantly, this is a virtual learning environment that we have created based on parent feedback, student feedback, administrator and teacher feedback, specifically designed to best meet the needs of your child. We have a lot of synchronous instruction. We are gonna provide a Chromebook for each student. Students who may have an, an IEP, 504, GIP will be supported by Pendelco. And um, if we do go back to hybrid and we can resume extracurriculars, uh, your student will be able to participate in that as well. Any Sun Valley students would receive their Sun Valley High School Diploma. And this also ensures that the funding of the district stays within the district rather than going to a for-profit cyber, which uh, really uh, is substantially expensive to the district. And I'm confident we can do uh, a, quite a nice job in district to support your child's needs. We are also uh, easy, flexible, and reputable. So this is a temporary solution to the pandemic. We know uh, parents have been put in a tricky situation and we uh, can provide a smooth transition back to hybrid or fill full in-person instruction by maintaining the same teachers within our district and at the secondary level, the same teachers, period. Students who prefer to remain in Pendelco Cyber uh, can do so for the entire year. So if you wanna wait until a, a vaccine formally comes out, that's entirely possible and you could participate in this program for the duration of the year. Quite simply, it is our teachers, our curriculum, and our community. And we just ask that you check before you choose. So we want parents to be fully informed uh, about what a PA cyber charter might look like versus our program. So if you are considering a PA cyber charter, please uh, contact myself or Dr. Steinhoff uh, to get more information about what we have to offer and how it might compare to what you perhaps are signing your child up for. Thank you so much.